Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Midwest Mountaineering's Outdoor Adventure Expo. Uh, today, we have uh, quite a few presentations lined up. If you tuned in earlier and tr we're trying to watch Alex Falconer's Boundary Waters presentation, we apologize for some technical difficulties, which we eventually got through, but we're going to go ahead and reschedule that one for a later date. So be sure to check out the uh, updated scheduling page at the OutdoorAdventureExpo.com site for that information. Uh, with me now, I have owner and founder of Vidos Mountaineering, Rod Johnson. Um, he's here to present on 10 spectacular North Shore waterfall hikes. So without further ado, here's Rod. Good afternoon. One of my favorite things is hiking up the waterfalls on the Lake Superior North Shore. Uh, as the water flows down from, from uh, oh, hundreds of feet above Lake Superior in many, many streams, there are many, many waterfalls to hike. And I'd like to share with you uh, 10 of the most spectacular waterfalls. Uh, there is a, a, a handout on the Outdoor Adventure Expo. Uh, a website that you can click on. It's a PDF. This is a, a hit right here. And it starts with Gooseberry Falls and goes uh, to the Pigeon River Falls. And there's a little map I've sketched out too. Uh, there are mile markers that make it easier to find. Uh, the mile markers start in Duluth and they go 150 miles up to the Canadian border. Uh, Gooseberry Falls is about 100 miles from the Twin Cities, and uh, it has many spectacular waterfalls. And I'm going to switch over to some pictures. There it shows Gooseberry Falls, just a little bit above Duluth. Just, just a little bit northeast of Two Harbors, Minnesota. Here's a map uh, that shows Highway 61 going across the middle. Uh, down uh, below Highway 61, there is the uh, two lower and one middle of Gooseberry Falls. And just on the other side of the bridge, going across uh, is uh, the Upper Falls, and then way up in the corner is uh, the Fifth Falls. So if you do a, a hike, uh, adding on all the waterfalls, it's about uh, two miles round trip. There is the Middle Falls of Gooseberry, along with Finney and Sharon. Now, Gooseberry Falls is, is one of the most spectacular areas. It's one of the most accessible. They have two large parking lots, which usually fill up and people have to park along the road. So if you want uh, a secluded hike, uh, Gooseberry Falls is not the place to do it. There's a lot of people. Although the thing about Gooseberry Falls is uh, they're fairly high and, and just very spectacular. There's my new pup, Teton, just earlier uh, in last month. You can see the two lower falls and the middle falls in the bridge here. And this is the upper falls. And this is the fifth falls which is actually a series of uh, about three different falls. There is Teton looking out over the edge, uh, just above uh, one of the lower uh, sections of the fifth falls. And this is uh, last month, this is the high falls. And the middle fall, oh, th this is the fifth falls. There's a bridge that goes across just above the fifth falls, so you can do a loop. I always uh, prefer loops myself. You, uh, in the winter, they're spectacular. They freeze over. Great place to ice climb, and sometimes you can even snowshoe up them. That's uh, Upper Falls, Upper Falls in the winter. So uh, any time of year is a good time to hike these waterfalls. 
just be sure that you have the, the right gear, the right apparel. Middle Falls in the winter. Uh, going just up from uh, uh, Gooseberry Falls is Split Rock Lighthouse State Park. And there, uh, actually, there, there used to be a loop you could do. That's five miles long. And you can usually still do the loop, but uh, uh, the bridge is out. Uh, so you have to kind of find a way across. This is the first uh, falls, and it's not actually on the Split Rock River. It's on a tributary, and there's a bridge there. It's a half mile in. If, if you have just a short time, you can hike in the half mile, see this really nice waterfall, although uh, it usually isn't flowing uh, with this much volume. And there's Sharon and Finney. Split Rock State Park is uh, probably called Split Rock because of this formation that's uh, about a mile and a half in from the trailhead. This is also a point where you can cross the river when the river is low in the summer. There are 11 waterfalls on this loop, which makes it probably my favorite hike. And it, it's also rugged, and there are many fewer hikers on this than, than uh, the Gooseberry one. As, as a matter of fact, there's probably uh, 50 times more hikers in Gooseberry than there are on the Split Rock Loop. Uh, you can uh, hike on the trail in the winter with uh, traction devices on your feet. Or what you can do is um, snowshoe up the, the river. Uh, I've also seen people ski and mountain bike up. But uh, to ski or mountain bike down the waterfalls, uh, you have to be uh, a good skier or mountain biker. Or take your skis off and just walk them. There is Finney doing one of the many winter hikes I do on the Split Rock River. Uh, this was uh, during a thaw in February. I actually uh, broke through the ice, but the Split Rock River in the winter is very shallow. It's usually fairly shallow in the summer, too. Uh, and uh, I only got my boot wet. This was a night hike. Lots and lots of waterfalls on the Split Rock River. Uh, this is a section uh, about uh, two miles from the trailhead where it's fairly easy to cross the river in the summer. There, there's a, oh, probably a half a dozen places to cross the river in the summer. Uh, if you're really good, you can hike from, uh, you can leap from rock to rock and not get your feet wet, but often you might get one of your feet a little bit wet. Another of the 11 waterfalls. This is kind of a, I only counted this as one, even though there's an island dividing the river here. Uh, this used to be the bridge uh, that was warped. Uh, when you're building a, a structure, if you build it with triangles, you get a rigid structure. If you don't use enough triangles, uh, you can get warpage, uh, especially with wood. Uh, the, Superior Hiking Trail Association five years ago saw down the bridge, you can see the remnants of the bridge here. So uh, when the water is high, it can be a tricky crossing. I have been working hard trying to get the DNR and the Superior Hiking Trail to rebuild the bridge. The West Monument even raised $8,000 that they gave the Superior Hiking Trail Association to rebuild the bridge. But I have not been successful in getting them to rebuild the bridge yet, but I will not give up until the bridge is rebuilt. If you uh, watch your Midwest Mountaineering emails, I may email you some links of some people that may uh, be able to help get the, put some pressure on the DNR to get the bridge rebuilt. I even went so far uh, as to uh, design and build a scale model bridge that I've superimposed over the river.
just a few miles up from the uh, on mile marker 58.5 uh, is the uh, Tattagooch State Park with the Baptism River. And there are two great waterfalls uh, on the Baptism River. Uh, there's the High Falls and there's Two Step Falls. This is just above the High Falls, start of the High Falls. And there is the High Falls which is the highest waterfall in Minnesota that's totally in Minnesota. Later on, my last slide is of the High Pigeon River Falls, which is higher than this, but it's partially in Canada. Uh, the best time to hike the waterfalls is just after a heavy rain because they're more spectacular. There's two ways to get in. Uh, most of these waterfall hikes, you can park at a wayside rest area if you don't have a state park permit. Uh, in order to get into the Baptism River, you do need the permit. Uh, unless you go uh, and get in from the uh, northeast side, uh, th there's a a uh, parking area just off of Highway 1 uh, from uh, Tetaguch uh, that goes up to Finland, Minnesota, and uh, you can hike in that way without a, a permit. And this is Two-Step Falls, which is uh, just a little bit downriver from the High Falls. Next up is uh, Crosby Manitou State Park and uh, Manitou Falls. Uh, this one you do not reach directly from Highway 61. Uh, I've uh, described the directions uh, uh, in my handout. Uh, what you do is uh, you take Highway 1 to County Road 7, uh, j just past Finland. And it's about a, a 15 mile drive from Highway 61. But it's, it's, a, it's more out of the way. And uh, if you want a secluded hike, you'd be more likely to get it. Next up, we have Caribou Falls, just a little bit Northeast. And uh, this is a, a, a half a mile hike uh, from the wayside area. Another spectacular falls. And one of the more popular areas, uh, which will be probably fairly crowded with tourists and hikers is the Temperance River. There are many waterfalls on the Temperance River and there's a bridge so you can do a loop. Actually, there's a hiking bridge for the loop and then there's a highway bridge. But uh, I'll go over, there's a whole bunch of waterfalls. Here. I'm a whitewater kayak, and I always look for uh, kayak lines uh, for the descent. And this would be a really rough one because the, uh, uh, the water falls down right near the cliff and your kayak would run into the uh, nearby cliff after you descended the waterfall. These waterfalls are all within uh, probably a quarter of a mile of each other. I'd be really surprised if anyone's ever kayaked this one. 
looks almost impossible to kayak to me. These are all from the Temperance, uh, which is just before Tofty. And here is the one just on the other side of the Highway 61 bridge. Another one that could be, in my opinion, almost impossible to tie up because the uh, falls goes way right into a rock face, which you'll tie up the two time into. Uh, next up the line, there's the Cascade River State Park, which is just before Grand Moraine, uh, which is uh, probably uh, close to five hours from Minneapolis, whereas the uh, uh, Gooseberry Falls is only about three hours from Minneapolis. Uh, this is a short walk from the uh, parking area. And the water uh, cascades down over a number of waterfalls. And there's a bridge so you can do a loop. There you can see the cascades. Uh, Right here, there's one, two, three cascades in this one picture. One of the really great things about these waterfall hikes is uh, you can social distance uh, and they're close to Minneapolis. I've noticed that uh, with the pandemic, uh, a lot more people are doing these hikes. I guess my, my favorite uh, most fun hike of all is actually a canyoneering hike. It's on the Condense River, which is about five miles uh, northeast of Grand Marais on Highway 61. There's a trail that leads up to a bridge that crosses the river nine tenths of a mile up. Uh, what a lot of people do is they'll just start right on Highway 61 and they'll just hike right up the river. The canyon is very narrow here. In some places it's, it could be called a slot canyon. And a lot of people just hike up, but you have to hike up the waterfalls too. This can be very tricky. And I would really recommend wearing a helmet on this. There's a picture of me on wet rock climbing up. And uh, if you didn't slip on a wet rock, you could uh, get a bad blow on the head, which is why I recommend a helmet. There's a picture of me in the slot canyon. Uh, twice I've tried to ascend up to the bridge and failed because the, uh, the last waterfall is a pretty big one and it's really hard to uh, hike up the waterfall. This one wasn't too hard to hike up. A couple of hikers I met on the way up and there is the bridge. Uh, what happened was uh, we had to back down uh, at the last major waterfall because it was just too dangerous. So I'm a canyoneer and usually canyoneers descend the waterfalls using uh, a rappelling technique. So I went back with uh, a rope and uh, helmets and harnesses and we rappelled down the waterfalls.
this is just an amazing, this narrow, very deep canyon. And uh, you can, anyone can hike up a, a short distance and, and do some of the easier lower waterfalls, but uh, a couple of the waterfalls are pretty tricky and they're best done by rappelling. But you, if you have a 50 foot rope, uh, you can use it to do a, a, the two 20 foot rappels and pull the rope down after you. There, there's a, a couple of bolts. Uh, there's one bolt on each waterfall. Uh, this is uh, Midwest Mountaineering Camping Buyer uh, Ward. And I took him on a rappel down a descent of the uh, Cadence River. And here he is. You can see how that would be fairly difficult to uh, climb. Although uh, at the end of August, when the, uh, if the river had ever uh, almost dried up, then you could probably do it without the telling. Uh, going uh, up further north, uh, northeast there on Highway 61, there's uh, Mag Judge Magny State Park. And there is the Devil's Kettle Falls, which is a mile in. Another very spectacular waterfall. Uh, the Devil's Track River uh, is supposed to flow underground for a ways here, and I haven't been able to find out where it does that yet, but that might be a fun adventure. Uh, just a, uh, across and a little bit northeast uh, is the uh, uh, Nanabaju Lodge, which uh, is a very interesting piece of architecture. And uh, uh, their dining room is just incredible. It has a Native American motif. And if you can stop there for lunch or dinner or even stay there at overnight, I would highly recommend that. I believe it's closed uh, right now for the pandemic, but it'll probably be open soon. And the last of my waterfalls is right up on the Canadian border and the Pigeon River. The Pigeon River High Falls and Middle Falls. Now, most of the hikes uh, that I'm talking about are fairly rugged. Uh, there are two that are probably wheelchair accessible, and one uh, is the Pigeon River High Falls, and the other one is, would be the Gooseberry Middle Falls. It's just a half a mile in, and it's asphalt and a boardwalk. And there it is, highest waterfall in Minnesota. Uh, if, if it's raining out, it will make the waterfalls more spectacular. And if it's a, a drought, the waterfalls may be just a trickle. The Middle Falls Trail is more rugged. It uh, reminds me of the Split Rock Loop Trail. And it's a three and a half mile round trip. There's the trail. I, I didn't really think it was too rugged, but definitely not wheelchair accessible like the uh, High Falls. And there we have the Middle Falls. And this is my last slide. It's another picture of uh, Gooseberry Falls. This is the Upper Falls during high water. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to mention. Uh, the trail often gets very muddy. 
and in the in the spring and summer, uh, your footwear can get jammed up with mud. And uh, right here, I was just hiking, and it, I had to uh, scrape all the mud out from from the uh, knobs of the tread. Uh, whereas this footwear here has has the uh, knobs further apart and is much less likely to uh, get clogged up with mud. If you're hiking in the winter, I would very, very highly recommend for safety that you use some uh, aggressive traction devices on your footwear, well, like these spikes here. Uh, on a downslope, it can be glare ice and extremely dangerous. Uh, as you're going up, there's, there's a couple of non-waterfall hikes that I would like to mention. Uh, from Shovel Point in Tetaguch, uh, there, uh, there's a really nice trail that goes out about a half mile to the Shovel Point. Uh, and uh, just a little bit uh, uh, be, before you get uh, right around uh, Tofty, uh, right at Tofty, there's the Carlton Peak Trail just inland on the Sawbell Trail. Uh, and also uh, a little bit further uh, north, maybe about five miles past Tofty, uh, is the Mount Oberg Loop. Uh, and you turn on the Onion River Road Trail for that. And I would like to open up uh, and entertain questions. Uh, I am fortunate enough to uh, have a cabin up on the North Shore. So if you need any advice when you're ever up there, please feel free to email me. It's uh, rjohnson at midwestmtn.com. Here. Um, you know, we don't. We link, we link the PDF too in the chat. Um, are there any waterfalls that you haven't seen that you're like, oh, I haven't gotten to that one? And I just, uh, for some reason. Yes, uh, there are a lot of waterfalls uh, up on the North Shore that I haven't visited. I tried to mention the most spectacular ones, but probably every few miles, uh, the, the water has to drain down. Uh, into the lake some way. And uh, every time there's a stream, there are waterfalls because uh, from the mountain range above, like the Sawtooth Mountains, uh, the water drops anywhere from uh, probably four to 800 feet. And uh, everywhere there's a drop, there's a spectacular waterfall. I just want to mention that um, all these presentations are being recorded and are going to be on our YouTube page. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash Midwest Mountaineering, you can watch this and any of our other presentations that have aired and any of the future ones. We have a few left this weekend. Uh, of course, the store is on sale through uh, Sunday, May 2nd. Uh, that's tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions about how to shop at the store, we are offering curbside business in store shopping. Uh, just let us know how we can help you get you outfitted for your spring and summer adventures. Um, don't see any other questions. Do you want to come up? Yes, I, just uh, the, the picture you're seeing in the background is, is an older picture. I'm the uh, one uh, down in the corner in, in the pink shirt. You can see that uh, uh, it was taken many years ago when I, I had uh, a brown beard and hair on my head. But uh, one great thing is. Uh, uh, it doesn't really require a lot of skill to do these waterfall hikes and, and uh, I'll hopefully be able to do them all my life. Great. Thank you, Rod. Really appreciate your time and presentation. And with that, uh, we'll go ahead and sign off. We do have another pres presentation coming up today um, at two o'clock with Bob O'Hara, 60 continuous years in the Boundary Waters, 1959 to present. And then another presentation ending, ending the day at 4 p.m. with uh, how to hike the, how to hike the Spear Hiking Trail with Andy Nelson. So uh, be sure to tune in for those. Uh, thank you very much for, for viewing out there and uh, we'll see you at around two o'clock. Thank you.